You're not giving me a break. You're harassing me at this harassing point. I, I'd like to here. leave. May I leave now, please? Huh? Where'd you get this? That's what she took. She took. Federal Bureau of Investigation badge. I do feel like I'm being detained. Am I being detained? Am I being detained? You're the one who called me here, so call 911. Call. I need medical attention right now. I love you. Hey, turn around. Let me see your hands. Turn around. Let me see your hands. Okay, let me see your hands. I need to see some ID. Get on the ground. Get on the ground now. Sir, don't argue. Face down on the ground. Face down now. Imagine being a trained federal agent only to find yourself on the wrong side of the law due to some questionable decisions made by some stupid local cops. Here are five real world examples of situations where cops try to mess with FBI agents. Stories that will leave you not only stunned, but also wondering about the state of law enforcement we have today. But first, please hit the like button, as YouTube is not a fan of these kind of videos. Now, let's get started. Kicking off today's episode is this rather hilarious, but sad video of two cops in Rochester, Minnesota, approaching a South Sudanese man claiming he looked like a suspect they have been searching for. But they were unaware of what fate had in store for them, and the situation took a sudden 180 when they realized the man was an undercover FBI agent. Let's take a look at how the complete situation unfolded. You've been your racial first part, oh, am I? Yeah, you're wrong. You're assuming I'm someone that I'm not. No. Get out of my face, man. You guys are harassing me. Yes, you guys are. Hey, that's you're right. f***ing harassing me. <laughs> yes, you are. No, no, no. He's harassing me. Why are you harassing me? You're assuming I'm someone I'm not. Okay, if you're not, then... No, 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 no. I'm free to go. Okay. Us. Oh, am I being detained? Yeah, you are. For what? I think you have more. You think? Yeah. That's an illusion. That's, that's an okay. illusion. You think? Stand up your hands. I'm not yes. For what? I don't have a horse. You're very wrong. Let me get this straight. So, our two wise cops here think that the guy is a suspect because he just happens to look like someone who committed a crime. A hunch, you could say. Not to mention the fact that the guy seemed pretty confident that the cops had him wrong and went even a step further, accusing the overzealous cops of racially profiling him. What makes it even more shocking is that these dum-dums also believe that that's enough to detain him. Don't these guys know anything about the law? Remember, the law requires cops to have reasonable suspicion that someone has committed a crime. And oh look, what do we have here? Must be based on more than a hunch. What this means is anything these cops did from here on was way beyond legal and was unconstitutional. No, you are wrong. What do you mean if you're wrong? You're wrong. You're wrong. All right. This is the second time I'm hearing this from the officer. If I am wrong, I am wrong? Think about it. It's one frightening statement that's both unprofessional and dangerous at the same time. If officers start throwing such excuses and logic in situations like these, you can only imagine what they would do if the stakes were high. This could easily turn out to be a nightmare for someone, if you ask me. I didn't do nothing. For what? For what? Can you tell me for what? For what? I'm under arrest for what? No, no, no. If you got the wrong guy, I'm suing all of you guys. Let me get your card. Can I get your card? Can I get your card? Okay. I'm not standing up. Listen, I'm not under arrest. I don't have a warrant. I don't have any. Unfortunately for the cops, the encounter was filmed on a cell phone camera, and we can see how the man repeatedly kept calling them out on their mistake and pointed out that they didn't have a warrant to arrest him. Something these cops should have known already. But then, things quickly escalated when one of the officers tried to grab him. Hey, yo! Hey, 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 hey! Hey, 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 hey officer! Hey, no, no, no! Hey, yeah, matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, look at my ID. He got the wrong guy, I'm telling you. Several voices can be heard in the background, and it seems like they know the man and are telling the officers that they made a big mistake and they got the wrong guy. You guys do got the wrong guy. You guys are stupid. That's not you. You guys are racial profile thinking I'm somebody. Take hey, some cuffs off. You guys really had nothing else to go to college for but be a cop and harass me to assume I'm somebody I'm not? My ID's in my back pocket. After the arrest, thinking it was a run-of-the-mill situation, this officer finally decided to follow up on the guy's request to check his ID. Watch, hey, watch, funny, watch how funny this is. Little does he know, he's in for a shock. Oh, what does that say? What does that say? Oh! Wrong guy! Oh! Wrong guy! Wrong guy. Oh my god! Wrong guy. Turns out, the person in cuffs is not just any suspect. No, no, it's an FBI agent. Right here in the middle of a local law enforcement activity, and these cops are in big trouble. 
You can only imagine the cop's expression, utter shock. It's not every day you arrest someone and they flash an FBI badge in your face. Just notice how this arrogant cop shifts from constantly establishing direct eye contact with the supposed suspect to avoiding any eye contact entirely after inspecting the ID. No, get the f off me, dude. Get off me, dude. Bro, you I need our cars. I need your supervisor over here. Call your supervisor. Call your supervisor. The agent goes on to reasonably explain the whole situation to the supervisor, who clearly looks uneasy at this point and is desperately looking for the nearest exit. Sir, can you please come here? Are you the supervisor? These guys are listening for a part of me. They assume I'm someone that I'm not. I told them I'm not who they think I am. And they, still and they said, no, nope, you are. I'm positive you are. But as soon as the agent demands their IDs, he showed his true colors. I need their cards. I need your card. I need your card. I need, I need your card. Yes, uh, yes, yes. No, no. Yes, I request your card. Why is that? Well, that was fucked up. Yeah. You guys, the no, these are the people. Yes, I'm the people. That's what I'm saying. That's because they're corrupt as fuck. Come on, baby, come on. Okay, I would like your card. Yep. And I'm going to follow the support on you, you, and you. Instead of owning up to his men's mistake, as he should have, the supervisor chose to defend their actions, giving flimsy reasons for the whole screw-up. Get them in, Sarge, will you? But seeing he had no choice but to obey the agent's demand, the IDs came out. First the supervisor, and then the two geniuses who started this whole fiasco. Is that how you guys work, John You assume someone is someone, and that's it? That's all you guys need? Yeah? Oh my god, what is American game for? Guilty and cocky. It's a hell of a dangerous combination, folks. It's cops like these who sully the good name of the entire law enforcement agencies. Instead of admitting his fault, which he should have rightfully done, all we see here is a man who doesn't have an ounce of regret. Shame on you, officer. But then again, what can we expect when you're led by such supervisors? I will make a complaint on all three of you guys. That's fine. Do your job better. Yeah. So if he wants to make a complaint, you go make it. I will make a complaint. All right. See what I'm talking about? All I can say is that the entire event was nothing but a poor show of unprofessionalism and a lack of A, B, and Cs of basic law knowledge shown by these foolish cops. As far as silver linings go, at least no one got harmed in this case, which is more than I can say for this FBI agent here. Can you run your body cam? I, I am now, because I don't know how legit you are at the moment. It's okay. Special agent Adam. The FBI. Okay. You got that on body cam? I do, but I don't understand what the problem is with you meeting me at the office. I'll talk to the U.S. Attorney's Office about it. You can cut off the reporting device now. Okay. Well, I will when I leave the area, sir. You might question why this FBI agent is asking the officer to cut off the recording device. Something doesn't add up here. Red flags for the FBI agent, right? Well, the answer is our special agent Hatton was actually investigating police corruption in the Franklin County Police Department. And as a part of this undercover operation, he asked the officer in the video, Mr. Rolf Gordon, to meet him at a random parking lot, perhaps to ask some questions related to the case. However, the officer didn't like the fact that the agent called his personal phone number instead of taking things through his office and grew skeptical of him despite the agent's disclosure of his credentials. Hey TJ, this guy is uh, telling me to turn my body camera off and telling me he's going to contact other people to get involved with this. Let me get his tag number real quick. He's got a radio and he's got credentials. Franklin, does that come back to any government agency? It just advises Advanced Wiring Company. Do you work for a Doesn't wiring company? It's a covert vehicle, Did he seriously think it would? Of course, it's a covert vehicle. What kind of undercover FBI agent would drive in an FBI registered vehicle? like I'm being detained. Am I being detained? Am I being detained? You're the one who called me here, sir. How yeah. did you get my phone number? I can't get that That's a pretty dumb thing to ask from an FBI agent. Hey, if an FBI agent is investigating you, rest assured he knows your number, your address, your affairs, your wife's affairs. Hell, he might even know your breakfast, lunch, and dinner patterns, including what types of boxers you like to wear. 
It's also important to note here that Agent Hatton had valid reasons for seeking such an informal meeting with Deputy Gordon, as revealed later in the interaction when Agent Hatton subtly hints at his potential involvement in a more extensive inquiry into the sheriff's office that goes beyond the scope of the deputy's citation while conversing with his supervisor. We can't call anybody in the PD because the PD is just here backing this guy up. It's Franklin County that's holding him, so you have to call the sheriff to let him know that his deputies have been stopped here and are holding him. He's going to ask why. You're not going to be able to tell him. Hmm, the plot thickens. Anyway, the officer later goes on to detain him, giving sloppy reasons like, oh, I don't trust you being an FBI agent, and you are being uncooperative, when in truth, he was the one who denied checking the agent's registration. Hey, you are detained at this time, sir. Hey, I don't think this guy's legit, man. But you're being very uncooperative with me. I, you asked me to come up here, you called my personal cell phone number. You, you can't tell me how you got it. Your vehicle's coming back to a wiring company, not the it's FBI. A covert vehicle. Okay. You Dude, get would mad. Would you like to see some registration? You get mad at me would because you, I turned my body like camera to, on. Would you like to see some registration? And you know a lot of stuff about me. Would you like to see the registration, sir? I, I don't really want anything from you at this point. My supervisor's on the way. Excellent. Uncooperative? Really? First, do your job as an officer. As the dilemma continued, Agent hadn't even showed his license and his badge for the second time to Officer Gordon, but somehow, Gordon remained unconvinced. Eventually, multiple supervisory officers arrived on the scene, but they were even worse than Officer Gordon and decided to arrest him and put him in the back of the patrol car. Not only this, they even decided to not roll down the windows or turn on the AC, and given the hot day in Florida, it was only inevitable that things didn't go well for Agent Hatton. Yes, sir. There, brother. Okay, okay. All right, I'm turning it on right brother, now. Open the door. I can't breathe. Sir, I can't open the door. You're brother. being detained right now. As time passed, the agent started complaining, and in spite of his repeated plea, the cop continued to ignore him. You're burning me up, brother. I had the defroster on. No, you didn't. Brother, I need air. God almighty. All of a sudden, they receive a phone call that should put the entire event to rest. 33, go ahead. He is, a, he is legit. 10-4. All right, that's what I'm doing right now. Here we go. All the proof you need in the world. However, even after this, the officer chooses to retain the agent inside the patrol vehicle, despite receiving explicit confirmation that he is, indeed, an FBI agent. Instead of promptly following the given instructions to release him, the officers continue conversing about the situation, all the while the agent pleads for his release. It is only after an additional three minutes of entirely unnecessary conversation that the agent is finally allowed to exit the vehicle. But sadly, the damage was done. Call 911. Call, I need a medical attention right now. Unlock me. Call, call 911. Call 911. We're, we're releasing you right no, now, call sir. Call 911 now. Call 911. I need 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. 30. After a further 10 minutes, the medics finally arrived and the cop explained the whole situation and said that the man complained about shortness of breath and vision loss. He started complaining of uh, shortness of breath, vision loss. In the hours after Hatton was released, FBI agents in brass descended on Apalachicola, meeting with Gordon and the sheriff to find out what happened and why. Both agencies later decided to put the incident in the rearview mirror, followed by Sheriff Smith's promise, and I quote that, both our agencies work together a lot better. Smith also agreed to the fact that they needed more training. But honestly, training or no training, that's no way to treat someone, let alone a fellow law enforcer. It's a great example of ego and how ego gets in the way of common sense. It also shows how sometimes police can take literally anything you say or do and turn it against you. Oh, and if you don't say anything, you're being uncooperative, and that's also grounds for suspicion. Fortunately, Despite what can only be characterized as disrespect and negligence from the officers, the agent did not sustain any significant injuries. However, the same cannot be said for ATF agent Burke, who was subjected to such mistreatment by the police that he found it necessary to file a lawsuit against them. On July 7, 2020, agent James Burke, a 16-year veteran of the ATF, was dispatched to a home on the 3300 block of Edgebrook Drive near Dublin, Ohio to confiscate a shotgun from a resident who was not permitted to have a firearm. 
but instead of letting him in, they closed the door in his face and called 911, reading Burke's badge number to the dispatcher. In Burke's mind, it was no big deal as he was frequently used to this verification process. What happened next was not only shocking to Burke, but to anyone who's watching this video. Hey, turn around, let me see your hands. Turn around, let me see your hands. Okay, let me see your hands. I need to see some ID, get on the ground! Get on the ground now! Get on the ground! Get on the ground now! I'm a federal agent. Sensing extreme aggression from the officer, Burke outright refuses to follow his orders to drop to the ground, seemingly determined to challenge the police's authority to frisk him for weapons. I'm a federal agent. I don't need to obey orders from the local police, he must have thought. But if that were the case, it would mean that any criminal could easily lie and say they're a federal agent to avoid doing what the police say. Even if Burke didn't seem dangerous, he should have just done what the police told him politely so they could quickly understand what was happening. Naturally, things escalated. I'm Why wouldn't you show me your ID when I got here? Don't move forward, okay. forward. You didn't ask for it. He is at 335. Get on the ground, we'll figure it out. I'm not overreacting. We got a call that someone's impersonating a police officer out here and doesn't have ID. No kidding, because she doesn't want to open it. Okay, get on the ground so I can find out who you are. It ain't happening. Okay, fine, fine. Do you find I think I'm a police officer or something? What the heck's the matter with you? Who do you think you are? Get on the ground. I'm not getting on the ground. for things. I'm not getting on the ground. 91 pulling up. I got my ID. Do not reach for your waist. Despite Burke's best efforts to prove his identity to the officer, the officer continued to remain hostile and keep his gun drawn. Once the second officer arrived, the situation took a turn for the worse for Burke. Sir, don't argue, face down, on the ground, face down, now! Running out of corners, he had no choice but to comply with the officer's demands. The officers kept their firearms drawn at Burke for over 90 seconds before they very aggressively placed him under arrest. All the way. You got my IDs right here, left pocket. Left pocket. And we're gonna put your arm on your back. Wait a sec. Do not resist. I'm not resisting. You're acting like a no, moron. Wait a second. Stop. Wait a second. Wait a second. No, don't do this. Wait a second. I got a medical condition. Get my license out of my pocket. Please. We're getting you secured first. Please, please, wait. No, no. Hold on, hold on. I'm hyperventilating. I'm not stop resisting. Would you yeah. please get my ID? Stop resisting. You. My, my wife, please. Stop right here. Resist. Please get it. I got please. one cuff on. Sir, get your help me up. Just hold me up. Yeah. Sir. Watch. I can't do Check this. Up. Sir. Stop resisting now. Sir, please help me. But wait. The show isn't over yet. Apart from the uncanny aggression, these cops left no stone unturned in bullying Burke. During the forceful arrest, they repeatedly used a taser on him despite him being face down on the ground and not putting up any resistance. Please, Joe, get my, your taser out. My taser, my get your taser out. Friend. Get your taser out, Joe. No, don't do that, please. Sir. Don't make me tase you. You're gonna get tased. No, no. Ow, ow, don't do that, okay. Here. Get him cuffed, get him cuffed. It is cuffed. Get, get him cuffed, get him cuffed. In pain, Burke continued to tell the officers that he was a legit ATF agent out on a case and his ID was in his pocket. Regardless of the confirmation, the officer continued with the arrest and put him in the back of the patrol vehicle. Why would you make us do this? I didn't want you to. I wanted to. Wait. No, you knew oh, what sir, you were sir, doing. Sir, 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 calm down. Relax. Hold sir, it. hey, guys, please, just talk to me for one second, please. Get in the car. No, we'll wait. talk later. Sir, wait, wait. You wait. had your chance. No, I was trying to give you my creds. You no, didn't let me show them to you. never once tried. I did. Get wait, in the car. Wait, wait. Now. Have a seat. Please. Wait, I got to breathe. Okay, please, you sir, can, let you me breathe. Sit down and breathe. Let me breathe. I, got, I have a medical condition. We're going to get air to you. Get no, your no, legs in. Get your sir. legs in. We're closing this door. The cops then forced Burke into the vehicle, ignoring all his pleas and explanations regarding his medical condition. I need air. Sir, please, call an ambulance. I'm asking for an ambulance. Okay, okay, okay. You're an idiot. We're crying out loud. You're a cop. You're not an ass. No way. I can't. You? You're fucking my head up. The seatbelt's in place. Please. Why would you act like this? I didn't act anyway. If you are a real police officer, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. I was trying to give you my credits. After about an hour, Burke was released without any charges. Later, Burke decided to file a civil lawsuit against the Columbus Police Department and the two officers involved in the incident, accusing them of use of excessive force and unlawful arrest. 
It was also reported that the trauma had such an impact on Burke on both physical and psychological levels that he has since moved to an administrative role within the ATF instead of field work. Our thoughts on the matter? Well, as evident from the footage without a shadow of a doubt, the officer's behavior is anything but constitutional in this case, and screams of aggression. But to give them a little benefit of the doubt, honestly, both parties involved are guilty to some extent, and Burke could have easily handled the entire altercation much more maturely by just agreeing to just surrender peacefully in the first place. For sure, a lot of drama could have been avoided. Don't you agree? Speaking of drama, get ready for the next one, as it's full of it. Though the man involved here is not from the FBI, but does have an excellent understanding of the law and is here to show how foolish and corrupt these cops can be. Mac Proctor, this guy, was parked in a private parking lot, patiently waiting for his takeout order while he is also on his delivery driver shift. Although his vehicle wasn't in an official parking spot, it wasn't obstructing traffic flow, and Mac had briefly left it unattended for about two minutes in order to pick up his food. Upon returning to his vehicle, a police officer approached him and claimed he was breaking parking regulations. All right, Mr. Proctor, uh, that is your last name. Everything okay? Do I need to answer any of your questions? You don't have to answer anything, dude. Okay. You don't um, have to. I'll have you stand here all day. I can, get paid either way. Can you go ahead and finish your job and so I can carry on? What's up with the anger, dude? I'm not angry. You're not angry? You always talk to everybody like that? I'm, I'm not angry. Oh, okay. I just want you to go ahead and wrap things up, please. Oh, okay. It seems like this officer named Diego Hernandez is getting a kick out of the situation and just simply wants to flex his power. It is true that in most cases involving cops, citizens get intimidated and reel back, giving a psychological upper hand to cops with this cop thinking they have all the power in the world and are in complete control of the situation. So it's no surprise that Hernandez here was taken aback by Mac's composure and his intelligent know-how of the related law. Mac knows that he has the absolute right to remain silent in response to the officer's inquiries, especially those that have no relevance to any criminal proceedings. All right, well, you know, I'm gonna give you a, a break on it, but you know what I'm saying, this isn't a parking spot, okay, dude? You're not giving me a break, you're harassing me at I'm this point. I, I'd like to here. leave. May I leave now, please? Uh, well, do you understand? Am well, I being detained? Here? Yes, you are. Okay. All right. So do you understand why I stopped you? Do I need to answer any no, more you of your questions? I'm, you don't have to. Okay. Okay. But then again, I could do this all day too. Hernandez sure has a lot of time on his hands if he is willing to do this all day. Hey, Mr. Servant Protect, don't you have bigger priorities like actually stopping people from committing a crime? Well, this proves that we judged him correctly. He does like to flex his power and bully people. I'd like to here. leave. May I leave now, please? Uh -huh. Mr. Proctor, would you like to leave? Do I need to answer any more no, of your questions? No, no, no. Didn't he say a while back that he was detaining Mac? Jesus Christ, make up your mind already, officer. I'm not the one that's acting this way, okay? I'm just asking you to do, you know, you know, I'm trying to give you a break here, all right? I prefer you just write me the parking ticket and let me go. Right, okay, oh, okay. Hernandez proceeds to complete the process, but comes back again giving excuses like they have to wait for another guy to come and write the ticket. Having nothing else better to do, the officer tried to have one final crack at Mac. Hopefully I'm not keeping you from anything, am I? No, I don't like talking. Is everything okay? Is there any other issues or anything going on that I should know of? Do I need to answer your questions? You don't have to answer anything. I'm, I'm concerned about your well-being. Is there something wrong? Do I need to answer any of your questions? Well, if, you're, if there's something wrong, it would be nice, yeah. Do I need to answer any of your questions? You don't have to talk to me. I'm just saying, I'm just concerned about your well-being. That's all I'm saying. Usually we don't get people uh, hostile. I've not been hostile. Okay. Oh, well, usually we don't get people wanting a ticket. You know what I'm saying? I'm going through all this. I could be having my lunch right now. And you too. I have to really give to Mac for displaying such calm and collected demeanor while Officer Hernandez bombarded him with all those irritating and nonsensical questions. Hey, Mr. Proctor, can I just give you your stuff so you can leave? Can you? I can, but you're the one. I would have let you go a long time ago. I what do to... I need to do for you to hand me my documents so I'll I can leave? I'll get you right now. I just want to know that you know, so you're okay because usually I don't get people all... What do I need to do for you to hand me my documents so I can be on my way? You're okay. 
I don't need to answer any of your questions. Hey, there we go again. Jesus Christ. Now, this is a guy seriously getting on my nerves. What is he, 12? I'm trying to say that... Uh, You're trying to display your power to me no, right now. No, I'm concerned about it. Is there a problem to be concerned about another human being? You okay. have no reason to be concerned about me. So it's okay then. You're okay then. You can hand me my documents and I can be on my way. Or we can... Fine. Okay. So, okay. So if I hand your stuff, you'll be fine and taken off and you're not angry, right? Ah, the ever-wise Mac. Realizing he's not going to win this battle of wits or the law, the officer had no option but to let him go. Well, I'm going to take a chance on you, all right? Here, Mr. Proctor, um, you got everything's cool, all right? We're blocking traffic here to your stuff. All right, hopefully every, you have a good day. Everything works out for you, all right? Am I free to leave now? Yes, you are. Could you please step away from uh, the vehicle? Yes, I will. You have a good day. Mac was eventually allowed to go without any further problems. However, this whole incident raises some concerning questions. Why did he encounter additional issues just for exercising the Fifth Amendment? Moreover, it's quite strange this interaction occurred at all. If Officer Hernandez had noticed Mac's vehicle obstructing traffic, wouldn't it be a wiser thing to just request him to move it out of the way? But no, he had to show his authority and had to bully him. Kudos for Mac for not entertaining him and showing him the doors as he rightfully deserved. Not to mention the fact that this whole incident just proves to all of us how important it is to know about the law and handle such situations if you ever land in one. How important is it? Let's find out in the next case where a bunch of cops arrested an ex-FBI security contractor solely for the reason that he just didn't know the law enough. How you doing, sir? Good. All right. What's up? Deputy Turner with the Sheriff's Office. The reason okay. I'm stopping you is your, your plate's obstructed. Yeah. Whatever that thing's got, you got to take it off, okay? Okay. It's got to be visible within a certain distance. Right. When you went to driving school and a cop pulls you over, what they tell you? Oh, you pull over when it's safe to do No, you pull over immediately. Okay? Let me tell you this. That, and, and, now, you pull over immediately. Sure. Um, because I don't know what you're doing inside this car. Sure, yeah. Hiding guns. You know what I mean? Yeah. Officer safety is number one. Kind of ironic when he mentions things like safety and pullover protocols when the cop himself has no idea about the law and is lying right off the bat. You see, there's no strict requirement to pull over immediately for various reasons, including traffic obstruction and safety concerns. It's advisable to pull over as soon as it's safe to do so, prioritizing safety above all else. Also, if you find yourself in an area that feels unsafe or you're unsure whether the vehicle behind you is a genuine police car, you can activate your hazard lights and drive cautiously to a secure, well-lit, and populated area. Imagine slamming the brakes right in the middle of traffic or getting robbed, or worse, assaulted by fake cops near a dark alley, something a cop should be well-educated on before he starts throwing misinformation. But this is not the end of the cops' lives. So who are you? Former NDOC and I used to work security at Harris. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm a contractor. Okay. Uh, do you have insurance on this thing? My partner, huh? Do you have insurance on this thing? Yeah. Your partner or what? Now my partner called me, I'm a contractor with Southwest Gas. Mm -hmm. So I gotta go over there and, and get him logged into his computer. No guns inside the car? Nah, no phone. Okay. Fast forward to a few standard questions. The cop begins to ask more targeted and detailed questions, attempting to discover evidence or information that could potentially incriminate the guy. What do you got right there up front? Hey, that's a sign. I contract. I do contract security. You contract security? So, so to have a sign. Turn it on. Yeah. Why haven't you taken the lights off of there? Yeah, I do contract work, so I have to have lights on this vehicle for something to work in. They shouldn't be that color, though. Yeah, they shouldn't be red and white, brother. Yeah, it depends on who you're contracting with. If you contract with law enforcement agencies, it's different. Which agencies do you contract with? The various ones. DOJ. Name some. A DOJ? Sure. So you have a contract? I've worked for DOJ. Yeah. Okay, so do you have a government ID? I have a contractor ID. Where's that? To my, uh, my hood. Ready for the big moment? Where'd you get this? That's an issue too. Issue two. Federal Bureau of Investigation badge? Now the cat's out of the bag. The officers were shocked to find out who he was. However, this doesn't prevent them from going too far and exceeding their authority by searching the agent without obtaining his consent. I'm going to read you your rights too, okay? Because you're, you're handcuffed, you know what I mean? So I feel more comfortable that way. But then, 
the police officer begins an unwarranted search of the agent's body and vehicle without any request or permission, violating the agent's Fourth Amendment rights, which safeguard against unjustified searches and seizures, an act both illegal and unconstitutional. No guns, right? Yeah. Inside the car? Yeah. Okay. Who, because, like I said, man, too. Put money in. Put that back in, which I'll put in the bag, okay? So the reason you're in cuffs, okay? Unless you're a sworn officer. I know it's Nevada better than Yeah, you're not allowed to have red and blues. Sure. Right? Because then you sure. could easily impersonate I mean, a police officer. Sure. So who issued this to you? My former employer. Your former employer? Yeah. So you used to work for the FBI at I, one point? I contracted with the Department of Justice and the FBI. These officers are obviously displeased that the agent has a response for every question. So the second officer starts to ask questions he knows the man cannot answer, aiming to create a situation that might incriminate him. Since you got the badge, where's your credit? at? Where's your federal credit? at? I don't have federal Once more, it's crucial to emphasize that the officer's concern is primarily with the lights on the agent's car. They do not, and I repeat, do not possess the legal authority to conduct a search of an agent's person in this situation. Therefore, going into his pockets is entirely unjustified and downright illegal. Considering the whole light deal, things do seem a little shady. As the incident happened in Nevada, it's essential to note that it's against the law for a civilian to use red and blue emergency lights on their vehicle. However, this man never activated them. And when he did, it was during his official duties as a contractor with a law enforcement agency. Besides, the guy never said he was in the FBI. All he said was he worked part-time in the FBI, so he was far from impersonating a federal agent. The matter was further escalated when a bunch of senior ranking officials showed up who surprisingly turned out to be bigger fools than the two cops and decided to turn the car upside down looking for any signs of evidence. Who knows what the cops found? or planted. All the more reason for you upstanding people to be aware of your rights and the civil laws that protect you. Well, someone did say that a journey of a thousand miles must begin with the first step. So what are you waiting for? Just hit subscribe and we will catch you in the next one.